Hey there, I'm Mike Gillette, your host, and this is the Soundscape Series 1937, Part 15, Episode 48 of When Radio Ruled. This podcast is a montage of excerpts from old-time radio shows performed live and broadcast August 8 to August 15, 1937. Starring Pinky Tomlin, Don Amici, Charlie McCarthy, Nelson Eddy, Edgar Bergen, W.C. Fields, Wendy Berry, Benny Goodman, Eve Sully and Jesse Block, Nelson Eddy, Robert Armbruster, Dorothy Lamore, Alice Brady, and more. Featured songs include Pinky Tomlin, Cowboy Medley, and Seven Stages of Man, Benny Goodman, Remember, Eve Sully, Swing, Benny Swing. These soundscapes are the result of the research phase of the When Radio Ruled historical documentary series. In order to find the best old-time radio excerpts to express the essence of the era, I listened to hundreds of hours of old-time radio broadcasts looking for the most interesting bits. When I hear something outstanding, a song or a joke or a comedy sketch, a news report or an interview, I add it to a best of clip reel so I can easily find all the best excerpts when creating the documentary. But not everything can get into the final version. For 1937, I boiled 6.3 days of programming down to 27 hours on the best of clip reel, from which a little under five hours made the final cut. And it seems like such a waste. Listening to these clip reels is one of my favorite parts of the process. I don't remember what I put on each reel, so they contain one unexpected gem after another and I want to share that experience with you. These excerpts are offered without commentary for your entertainment and education. So here are voices from 1937, voices sadly now silenced, great performers living again because you're listening to them perform live now. He always sings jazzy music to his cattle as he swings back and forth in his saddle on a horse, pretty good horse at a syncopated gate. And the cattle do the jelly to the roar of his revolver, how they run when he shoots his gun. Cause the western folks all know, well, he's a highfalutin, rabbit shooting son of a gun from Oklahoma. He's some cowboy, talk about your cowboy, ragtime cowboy Joe. Where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy. The skies are not cloudy all day. Oh, carry me back, carry me back to the long prairie, the long prairie, where the coyotes howl, oh, hear them howl, and the wind blows free. Wind. And when I die, you're never gonna die. You can bury me. Bury you where? Neath the western sky, what a way out there, on the long prairie. On the long prairie, get along, get along. This is 
is the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and this is Don Amici, greeting you for Wendy Berry, the charming young English actress who does such great work in the new picture, Dead End, and greetings, too, from Dorothy L'Amour and W.C. Fields. Ah, Beauty and the Beast, huh? <laughs> yes, Beauty and the Beast. Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy and Robert Armbruster. And, of course, we all spread the welcome mat out for that grand singer who joins our regular company, Nelson Eddy. Oh, boy, Nelson Eddy, huh? We're making some brand new friends today, huh? Yes, Charlie, all of us like to make new friends, and that certainly goes for Chase and Sanborn. How true, how true. But tell me, Mr. Amici, what kind of a fellow is Nelson Eddy? Oh, that should be easy for Sherlock McCarthy. Oh, well, no clues, Amici? Yes, here's the real clue to work on, Charlie, for Nelson Eddy is going to sing his first song for us, Vincent Human's Stirring Great Day. Nelson Eddy. Thanks again, Nelson Eddy. But look, you'd better watch out because I see that third-degree look in the eye of Detective Charlie McCarthy. My guess is that our favorite bad boy is still intent on getting the lowdown on you. But Edgar Bergen has Charlie under control as usual, so let's see what Charlie's up to. Say, Edgar, what great mystery is Charlie working on now? Well, how about it, Charlie? Huh? Are you still the great detective, or are you making plans now for another birthday party? Well, it's... uh... I'm still a detective. I see. Yes, I'm trying to figure out where I got some of those birthday presents from. I see. <laughs> yes, sir. At least I found out it was Fields that sent me that bottle of furniture polish. I see. Yes. <laughs> it was 2% alcohol. <laughs> it was cut when I got it. Yes. I didn't even need a chaser. I see. Was I sore? <laughs> well, now, John. Remember, that's just a little prank. Yes, of course, yes. You must accept that in the spirit of fun. Yes, of course, of course, of course, yes. And then, and if anyone should offend you... Yes. Remember that there's a pleasure in forgiving. There's a what? I say there's pleasure <laughs> in forgiving. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Yes. I'm, I'm awfully glad you said that, Mr. Bergen. Are you? Yes, because I'm in trouble. Oh, I see. I'm in trouble. W- w- would you forgive me for a mistake, Mr. Bergen? Right. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but, uh, yes, of course. But you haven't done anything, have you? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. No, but, uh, but just suppose, suppose I should, see? Yeah. Let's say, let's say I should, uh, say, suppose I should borrow your car, see? Let's say. Mm-hmm. And, uh, let's just say I should scratch the fender, see? Let's say. Yes, uh, I see. But you didn't, did you? Oh, no, no, no. I- I'm just let saying. I see. <laughs> well, of course, that's all right. Yes, I thought that would be it. Because, you see, my car is still in the garage. Yeah, yes, it was. What's that? I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, let's say it is. What's that? I mean, I mean, it is. It is, yes. Well, it better be. Yes. Now, don't tell me, Charlie, no. that anything has happened to my car. Uh, no. <laughs> You're making it difficult. <laughs> Mr. Bergen, it's only right that I should tell you. Yes. Now, now, do you want my story or, or the truth? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, I know you're only kidding. Yes. Because my garage is locked. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Well, you see, I was walking past the garage, see, and I knocked on the door. I mean, I'd snitched the keys. I mean, I, I'd pushed the door. To, no, I mean, the door was open, and I walked in. You did? Yes. The door was open? Yes, it was. It was? Yes, it was. After I pushed it in. <laughs> so uh, I said, maybe someone has been monkeying around with a car. Just like that. Yes. And then I looked around, but it was all right. Yes. Out the van. Yes. <laughs> Now, Charlie, uh, you didn't take that car out, did you? I, uh, oh, uh, yes, I did. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why did you do that? Well, I tell you, Mr. Bergen, you've been looking so peony lately. Yeah. I decided for your good I would drive out in the country. I see. And get some goat's milk. You, you mean you took my car to get some goat's milk? Yes, that's what I did. I see. I hope you're not mad. No, no, no. <laughs> You driving my new car. That's what I did, yes. I see. Do you know you might have had a wreck? Oh, that is not at all impossible. (laughs) I speak from experience. (laughs) Now to go on with the story. Remember, you said it was a pleasure to forgive? Yes, that's right. Mr. Bergen, would you like to be awfully happy? (laughs) No. No. Now, don't tell me, Charlie, that you... Oh, no, no, no. But I wouldn't say that, no. But even if I had, uh, uh, the car was ready for a trade-in, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no. 
Why, what do you mean? That car is only two months old. Yeah. Why, you can't tell that car. Can't tell the car from a new one. Yeah. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Hardly looks like a car at all. Charlie, I'm very proud of that car. Are you? Yes. Still? Yes, yes. yes. It performs beautifully. Well, the steering wheel doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? It was all right last night. Oh, well, that was last night. Yes. How long did you have it out? Uh, all day. All day? Yes. My goodness. Did you run into friends? They weren't exactly friends. <laughs> but uh, we did exchange names and license numbers. <laughs> I think I'll hear from them. Yes. Charlie, you don't mean to say that you're in trouble. I'm going to confess. I might as well break down. The car did. Yes, I... <laughs> Well, young man, you better tell me just exactly what happened. Yes. And be quick about it, too. Well, well here's how it happened. I, a car it was coming along, and the car crowded me over, see? Yes. And then there was another car coming towards me, see? Yes. And then and they came closer, and... Oh, you know how crazy some people drive. <laughs> yes. Well, that's how it happened. I see. Well, what happened? Uh, what happened to the car? Now, don't tell me that you spat, uh, scratched that paint job on the fender's. On the fenders? Yes. I regret to inform you there are no fenders. <laughs> then you crashed? I didn't miss him. I... <laughs> well, where is the car? I got the horn in my pocket. <laughs> Were you driving alone? Uh, no, Skinny Dugan was riding in the rumble seat. I... He was playing a rear admiral. He was. <laughs> And where is Skinny now? I don't know. The last time I saw him, he was flying south. I think he has an uncle in Dallas. Uh, well, young man, you certainly have made a mess of things. Yes, yes. Is this car, is this car still on the road? Uh, no, it isn't there now. I see. It's been taken. Oh, so it was taken? Yes. Did you report to the police? No, they took it. Oh, they took it. I see. Well, is it a total loss? Uh, no. I still have the horn. The horn. It still goes beep, beep. It does. Yes. Beep, beep, yes. Do you know that horn was a $95 French four-tone horn? Yes, I know. It used to go boo, 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 boo. That's right. But now it goes beep. I see. <laughs> I don't understand that. Well, after all it's been through, it's lucky to go beep. I see. Charlie. Uh-huh. Charlie, come here. Uh -huh. I want to talk to you, Charlie. What? Come here, I want to talk to you. Now, Mr. Bergen, mm -hmm. I'll pay you back. Listen, Charlie. No, I'll pay you back. I'll give you my stamp to make you know. It's gonna be a great day. Oh, a great day. Oh, it's gonna be a great day on the hills of home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Amici, uh, Nelson Eddy sings like a bird, doesn't he? But what kind of a bird is he? Well, you're about to find out, Charlie. Huh? Nelson, since you're going to work together early and often, I want you to know Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. I've looked forward to meeting you, Nelson. All right, swallow me to say that, Edgar. Step aside, Bergen. Let a man get in on this. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Eddy. Now, Charlie, please, huh? You're liable to give Mr. Eddy the wrong impression. Am I acting too sweet? No, no, no. <laughs> Nelson, this, of course, is Charlie McCarthy. Of course. How do you do, Mr. McCarthy? Oh, it's Mr. McCarthy, is it? <laughs> He's giving me that, is he? <laughs> oh, Mr. Eddy, you know, I sing, too. You, you know? do? Yes, hmm. yes. But you don't have to worry, because they fixed it so that I sing after you, mm -hmm. you I'm pretty tough to follow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they protected me, Master McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's Master now. <laughs> I'm getting younger by the minute. <laughs> Mr. Eddie, have you been listening in to our show? Oh, yes. I never miss it. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Well, is there, is there anyone on the show? Or there, I mean, any a little fellow or you, anybody you listen to particularly? You know? Well, yes, I, uh, I, I listen to the entire cast, Charlie. Uh-huh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, I'm in the cast, you know. Uh, I yeah, know. yes, I guess you are. Yes, you guess I are, yes. <laughs> well, you must have heard me, I guess, huh? I, I guess I did. Ah, uh, that's nice, it's... 
Not sure, though, are you? <laughs> yes, yes, I've heard you. I'm, I'm quite sure. Uh-huh, yes. Well, it's nice to be positive. <laughs> Must have made an impression. You, you wouldn't by any chance run into a compliment around here, would you? <laughs> Charlie, maybe you'd like to have me tell you what I really think of you. I don't see how you can avoid it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> frankly, frankly, Charlie, I've, I've heard lots of radio programs. And yes. I've listened to many great comedians. Oh, Mr. Eddie. And I've heard you, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have. Should I thank him for a crack like that, Bertie? <laughs> no. Charlie. I'll fix that guy. I'm going to flaunt my girl in his face. Oh, Dorothy. Yes, Charlie. Dorothy, I want you to meet Nelson Eddy. Miss Eddy, this is Dorothy Lamore. I might add, she's a bit that way about me. Yes, Charlie, yes, I see, yes. yes. But she makes up for that in so many ways. Yeah. Uh, her beautiful eyes, lovely hair. What a line, what a line. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Eddy, you say such sweet things. You've always been one of my screen favorites. Thank you, Dorothy. If, if, if I wouldn't be presuming, I'd, uh, I'd like very much to invite you to a little dinner party at my home after the show. Uh-oh, watch him turn, watch her turn him down. She's got a date with me. <laughs> oh, I'd love it, Nelson. Uh-uh. I'll be there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can't trust anybody around here. <laughs> Daddy, do you really mean you'd break a date with me? But, Charlie, how can I refuse Mr. Eddie? He says such nice things. Oh? Uh-huh. You don't say such sweet things to me anymore. Oh, I see. Well, can I help it if Bergen is slipping in? <laughs> well, McCarthy never loses without putting up a fight. Look here, Eddie. Now, look out, Charlie. He's pretty tall. Don't worry. I'm not going to strike him. <laughs> I'll kill him with conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Eddie, you know, you know, they've signed me up for pictures. Oh, so you're going to work in pictures now, Charlie, huh? Yes. You you work in the cinema too, don't you, Eddie? Huh? Oh yes, I do, Charlie. Uh huh. Yes, it. Watch me fix you now. Yes. Uh, since your success uh, in the movies, tell me, how does it feel uh, to be so famous? Oh well, Charlie, I I don't know. I I just don't know how to act. <laughs> You're telling me. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're... you're not looking for a chauffeur, are you? Uh, you? Have you got a new car or a car at all, mister? Yes, yes, I've got a, I've got oh, a new one. Oh. Yes, indeed. You and have... I am looking for a chauffeur. You are you, looking for... You know of anybody that... Uh, I've only started on you. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, you know, I can drive. I'll well. drive, yes. And if you just give me the keys, Eddie, I'll be glad to help you out. I'll fix that guy. I won't even bring the horn back. <laughs> just here to say hello to us, you know. Oh, hello, yeah. Mr. Fields. Oh, uh, hello, Charles. Hold still for half a tick, will you? Why, why do you stare at me that way, Mr. Fields? I uh, was just wondering how many ping-pong paddles I could carve out of you. <laughs> you know, Bill, you shouldn't get such silly ideas into your head. Oh, that's right. It wouldn't even make a good pair of shoe trees. Yeah. There he goes. There he goes again. I'll oh. clip that guy. I'll mow him down. <laughs> yes. Go away. Go sit in a post hole. Uh. Bill, wait a minute. You, you know Miss Wendy Berry, don't you? Oh, yeah. Hello, Wendy. It's Wendy. It's Wendy, Mr. Fields. Wendy. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is, dear. We haven't had a blow like this for over a fortnight. <laughs> What do you think of the Ranger beating the Endeavor in the yacht race? Well, you can say as you like. The Endeavor is best. Oh, yes, yes. By the way, Miss Barry, how is Jack? You must be thinking of Elaine Barry, aren't you? Oh, yes, Elaine Barry, the Shakespearean actress. Uh... (laughs) Are you British, Mr. Fields? No, I was born in... uh... Come closer. I don't want this to ever get out. Oh, no. (laughs) I shan't tell anyone. Sean, that's wonderful. <laughs> I was born in Philadelphia, PA. Is that Philadelphia Pa? Yeah, Philadelphia Pa. <laughs> Portland me and Kansas City Mo. Kansas City Mo. Oh, I suppose that was named after a little Jewish chap. 
It wasn't named after an Eskimo. <laughs> Kansas City Mo is Hollywood Cal's brother. Have you ever been to Chicago ill? Oh, yes. I was in Chicago very ill. Frightfully ill, were you? Yes, frightfully. You don't uh, speak understand English at all, do you, dear? <laughs> yes, certainly. <laughs> Although I was born in Hong Kong, China. Oh, I thought there was something screwy here. Hong Kong, China, that's fine. If I give you my laundry today, could you have it back Saturday? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Fields, you are so clever. Who told you I was clever, dear? All your friends say you're clever. Darn it, I told them not to tell you. Uh, do you know, Wendy, England and America have been arguing about my birthplace for years. I know. Over there, they claim you're born over here. And over here, they claim that you were born over there. Oh, very good, Wendy, very good. <laughs> How do you like America, Wendy? I beg your pardon? Never mind, don't tell me. I love America, Mr. Fields. Why, do you know that ever since I came over, I've been learning what you Americans so naively refer to as English. Oh, it's quite a study, dear. <laughs> yes. I'm gradually losing every trace of my English accent, don't you think? Yes, one would never guess you were English unless they heard you talk. <laughs> hey, Bill, you ought to hear Miss Barry sing an American popular song. I should, eh? Oh, and how? All right, Wendy, go on, go to town. Uh, this is an old American ditty, Mr. Fields. I hope you like it. I think I will. Bye, be fi, sir. You've got the cutest little bye, be fi, sir. There's do, Bye, be fi, sir. Just a minute, Wendy. Over yes. here we have a quaint way of pronouncing bye, be fi. Oh. We say baby face. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I can say baby face, but uh, then it won't rhyme with the second line. What's that? There is no other dear to take your place, sir. Oh. Bye, be fi, sir. No. I say, tight your plies. <laughs> Soul wouldn't do, I suppose. <laughs> no. You need plies. I once heard a very lovely English ballad, dear. Perhaps How'd you know it, Wendy. How does it go? Goes like this. When my eye print strings hang low, you followed me round through sleet and snow. And now my eye print strings won't me. Oh, that's marvelous, Bill. Too far, I'm not finished. Too far, it's me by a pound of Beautiful, beautiful, Bill. I wish to goodness my ah, nipple was far. You'll never beat that, Bill. Why and bouncing stop? about on his far balls and knees. Just a minute, Bill. Just a minute. And I don't know what he might be coming on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Get the weapon. We know how bad. Song, Don. I got a cold. I slept in the yard with the gate open. Right? <laughs> oh, Mr. Fields, that was so too marvelous. Do you know what they're telling about Gricey Fields? Yes. What should I have said? No. <laughs> well, the Archbishop of Canterbury. No relation is, uh, to the Archbishop of Canterbury, is he? Uh, one and the same. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah. Well, uh, no. <laughs> now, uh, Gricey. Gricey. You don't mean Gricey Helen, do you, dear? No, Miss Fields. I mean, Gricey Fields. Is it a long story? No. Oh, good. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the Archbishop of Canterbury... Canterbury is, uh... again, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. He asked Gricey Fields if she was any relation to the great W.C. Shh. Nick, there's a censor over there. <laughs> what did Gricey say, dear? Hurry. She said, go lice to boot. <laughs> oh, oh, that's wonderful. It's getting very deep. That's the start of it. That's why she said, yeah. Yeah, Bill, that was awful clever, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, one of us is in a hurry. I got to dash <laughs> off and have some tea and crumpets, a little strawberry jam, some scotch haggis. Oh, uh, uh, before you go, Mr. Fields, may I tell you something that has been on my mind for the past fortnight? Oh, we'd love to hear it, wouldn't we, Bill? Speak for yourself, Don. Ah. <laughs> uh, and it's been on your mind for a fortnight. Go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> Listen, punk. Get this straight. Oh, they crossed. Ah, oh, so a button on your lip. Come on, swing it, sister. After taking a slant of that beak of yours, Bill, I'd, I'd like to borrow your nose for a port light on my yacht. A Charlie McCarthy in silk and frock. Ah, oh, pipe down. <laughs> Pipe down. Do you smell any trouble around here? Here, I don't smell anything. Well, if you don't smell anything with that nose, then nothing smells. No. <laughs> look out, look out. Tell us who's there to you. Ranger and Barry isn't going to catch oh, the Oh, give me room. Oh, I'll slay that guy. Hey, wait. 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 H
This is Benny Goodman welcoming you to the swing school for Camel's Cigarettes. Well, what's on the musical blackboard tonight, Professor? Oh, it's really going to be different tonight, Doctor. But first, we're going to swing in our stride with Remember by Irving Berlin. Latch on, boys. That dizzy dame, Eve Sully, and the man she's driven daffy, Jesse Block. To Miss Eve Sully, this is Professor Benny Goodman. Sally. <laughs> Hello. The pleasure, I'm sure, Miss Sully. I've met Jesse Block before. How are you, Jesse? Well, I was okay when I first came here, Benny, but I, I don't... Sully, uh, I might add that Professor Goodman is the world's greatest clarinetist. Oh, he is? What instrument does he play? Yeah. <laughs> He plays the clarinet. He's a virtuoso. Well, he looks like an American to me. He is an American. Why don't you step up on the platform and sing a song for the students? Oh, uh, sing a song? That's right. Oh, uh, no. I won't get on any platform. Why, once my uncle got on the platform, and in five minutes he was dead. Why, what happened? Somebody sprang the trap. <laughs> and boy, did he swing. <laughs> well, go ahead, Eve. Sing, swing, anything. <laughs> Swing, Benny, swing. Swing, Benny, swing. When cold winter comes and we're all out of wood, why should we call up the woodmen? I'll just tune in, Benny Goodman. That music, what it is. Swing, Benny, swing. He'll chase old Mr. Blues away. Doggone it, those seven ages of man Make Shakespeare an old so ran In this modern existence we need no assistance From the antiquated Mr. William Shakespeare's plan 
We've a new seven ages of man And we'll demonstrate if we can We've a subject to rave on Come on, board of Avon Listen to the modern seven ages of man And unless your name is Cantor It might be a boy <laughs> Why should he study his history? He'd rather go to see Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> then comes the sweetheart. He's quite a boy. They can't get married. She's unemployed. <laughs> he must have money to keep her in smoke. Does he look for a job? No! They spun job the folk. <laughs> Number four is a soldier. Number four is a soldier. Number four is a soldier marching down the street. Does he fight to keep us free? No, he joins the CCC. There's something about a soldier marching down the street. After the soldier fighting in a trench, then comes the justice sitting on a bench. In the court, in the court, in the court, in the court room. Nine old men, nine old men, sitting on the bench, sitting on the bench. They all expected to get the axe, made up their minds they would face the facts. It didn't work, so they all relaxed. Nine old men, nine old men. I did a little, the cat and the fiddle, now we come to the middle-aged man. He's fat and fifty, but he sure is a nifty, he's dressed like a real dapper dan. Every night he's trucking at the truck, wears a toupee and gambles with stock. He's kind of sporty, says at last starts at forty, he's a rip-snorting middle-aged man. He's not so spry Yet he isn't gloomy or blue His social security's almost due <laughs> That's the seven ages of men As seen by the modern clan Fifty million exponents Can't be wrong as opponents Of the antiquated Mr. William Shakespeare's plan Wait a minute, Tomlin. Perhaps my mind is shabby. I've been asleep these many years in the dust of Westminster Abbey. But Shakespeare isn't washed up yet. I'm willing to call your bluff. No one can say the Avon kid can't knock out modern stuff. So let's do a little trucking. Hot to razzmatazz. Hidey, hide. Whoa, ho, ho. What I want is jazz. Oh, the seven ages of man. Woohoo! Oh, I want to swing because I think it's grand. Then come on, Mr. Shakespeare. You've got what it takes, dear. Woo! Woo! Let's go sign up the band! This is the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and this is Donna Michi welcoming you for Nelson Eddy and W.C. Fields. Oh, Mr. Michi, I... Are Fields and Eddie merging to mow me down here? I don't know, but you better watch your step, Charlie. A hearty welcome, too, from Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Stick around, Bergen. I may need you. And oh, yeah. Dorothy Lamour. Ah, Dorothy. A loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and wow, wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and as our special guest, Miss Alice Brady, whose great performance as the gay and giddy mother in My Man Godfrey put her in the top rank of screen comedians. Yeah, oh, I love funny actresses. Yeah, Charlie, but tonight Miss Brady is going to demonstrate for us her equally great dramatic ability. I love dramatic actresses. <laughs> I guess you just love actresses, Charlie. Yeah, I guess we so hope you'll is. enjoy our program, and then we can count all of you as our friends, and of course, friends of Chase and Sanborn Coffee. Yes. Now, while we're in a remarkable...
remembering mood, I uh, seem to recall something or other about a joyride that one Charles McCarthy had at the expense of Edgar Bergen's car last week. I hope it's all straightened out. <laughs> well, here comes the McCarthy wrecking crew in person, and the best way to find out whether America's favorite bad boy is in serious trouble again is to question his pilot and guide. How about it, Edgar? Have you forgiven Charlie for his escapade? Please, Don. I'd rather not talk about it. I've never been quite so disappointed with any individual in my life as I am with Charlie. Not only did Charlie steal my car and wreck it, Don, but he started a fight with a man he ran into. Is that true, Charlie? Uh... Yes, Your Honor. I mean, yes, Mr. Amici. <laughs> what did you do, Charlie? Huh? And what did you intend to do about that accident? Uh, what are you going to do about it? Oh, the accident? Yes, yes. Mm, yes, I know. Seems that I've done enough, don't you think? Yes, sir. <laughs> but you know, you'll have to appear in court. I don't think so, Mr. Bergen. You don't think so? Oh, I see. You see, they took your license number, and it was your car, and so I gave them your name, too. Oh, I <laughs> Why should both of us get mixed up in it? Oh, I see. Yes. Well, that's nice. You have the nerve to do that. Yes. Charlie, have you no conscience? Well, yes, I have, Mr. Bergen. Yes. yes, it bothered me so much yesterday, the whole thing. The horrible incident. <laughs> I decided to go to the police station and confess. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. And did you do it? Uh, no, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I got on the wrong streetcar. I see. It was so foggy. I couldn't tell one car from another. I see. Later on, I found out it wasn't a streetcar at all. It was a lunch wagon I was riding. <laughs> and when did you realize that you made a mistake? When I got the check. I see. <laughs> oh, it's humiliating, to say the least. Well, there's a Mr. Gazzolo coming to see me. Yes. Probably he's the owner of the lunch wagon. No, no, he isn't, no. He's the man I ran into. Oh, I see. Yes, he's the owner of the car that is... Uh, it was his car. That's uh, the other one. I see. It's all too gruesome. Yes, sir. <laughs> Charlie, now, uh, will you tell me truthfully? Well, I'll try, yes. Yes. How badly damaged was his car? Well, Bergen, why split hairs? I see. <laughs> junk is junk. I see. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Here comes Mr. Gazzolo. Ask the kid. He broke my machine. What's you got to say for yourself, eh? I have nothing to say for yourself. Talk to him, Mr. Bergen. He's my lawyer. Is he your lawyer? Yeah, Bergen's my mouthpiece. <laughs> Well, shut up your mouthpiece. Quiet, Bergen. All right, all right. Listen, I got to get the paid. That's all I want to know. Yeah. Mr. Gazzolo, believe me, I shall see that you are reimbursed. That's no good. I got to have the money. <laughs> well, what kind of a car were you driving? Well, is, if you put the pieces together, she was a five passenger sardine. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looked like when I got through. Yeah. A sardine can. Yeah. It was a fish cart. All right. Shut up your face, you. You talk a lot, you say nothing. Would you mind telling me just exactly what happened, Mr. Gazzolo? Well, I was a driver along. Yeah. My mind on my business. Is there nobody around me for blocks? All of a sudden, a Sacramento, California. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the geography out of it, will you? <laughs> Is a crash of the glass, is a blow the whistle, is a push of the ambulance a bell, is a grit the big crowd. It was a sellout, Bergen. <laughs> yeah, go on, Mr. Gazzolo. Is it somebody yelling? Man is a kill. Oh, I my. turn around, I take a look, it's a me. No. <laughs> hey, the kid is a crazy. He can't drive an automobile. What do you mean I can't drive? I hit you, didn't I? <laughs> Listen, are you gonna pay me or are you gonna go to jail? Well, how much? You're going to pay me $10 or you're going to get the 10 years in the jail? Oh, dollar a year, man, huh? <laughs> Say, there again. Yes. Can I talk to you for a minute? No, no, Charlie. No, no. There's no use trying to talk me into this, Charlie. Oh, yes. You've committed a crime and now you must pay the piper. Oh, is Gazzolo a plumber? No, no, no. <laughs> There's no use, Charlie. <laughs> You'll have to suffer the consequences, that's all. Uh-huh. Very well. So be it. So be it. If I must go to jail, I'll go. Yes. But before I go, I would like to make one last request. Yes. Oh, Professor Armbruster, would you play my favorite song? Any little last favor to make you happy, Charlie? Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> That's it, please. 
end of a perfect day. Yes, sir. At my tender age to think I must face jail, Alcatraz, iron bars, and the big houses. Well, Charlie, maybe I can help you out. No, 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 no. I have played the piper. Now I must commit to crime. Yes. <laughs> what difference does it make where I go? Nobody really cares. After all, ten years in jail isn't so long. I may meet some nice friends there. Mm-hmm. What's ten years among friends? Yes. Say, look, oh, maybe, I maybe I haven't been too strict. Oh, no, 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 no. You're entirely in the right, Mr. Gazzolo. But, Charlie, really, I... You know, don't please, Mr. Bergen, no. I'll work hard. Maybe I'll get a year off for good behavior. Then you'll be proud of me. Yes, yes. I may even learn a trade. A trade? I may learn to be a pickpocket. I mean, eventually, because <laughs> I... Listen to Charlie, my boy, you... You're making me feel kind of bad. Maybe I was too hard. Huh? Oh, no, Mr. Gazzola, no, no. Even though you sent me to jail, I still love you. You love me? Mm-hmm. Oh, Charlie, you love me? When the word prison is mentioned, you may not be able to sleep because you'll know it was you and you alone who sent me to prison. Oh, you make me cry. You break my heart. <laughs> but though I rot in solitary cell. And mice run over my fragile body. I shall love you just the same. Oh, please, please, stop it at the kid. I cannot send the cute little boy uh, like him to jail. I uh, forgive him. You forgive me? Oh, you're wonderful, Mr. Gazzola. I'll work for you for life, for nothing. You work for me? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but look, what can you do for me? I can drive your new car. <laughs> The house is haunted. Oh. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, what's the matter with you? Now, don't scream at me like that. Boy, oh boy, was I scared. <laughs> what a bedtime story. Why, why, what's the matter, Charlie? Didn't, didn't you like the play? That was no play. That was a massacre. <laughs> hmm. Are you all right? Are you alive, Amici? Why, of course I'm alive. We're all alive. Boy, aren't we lucky? <laughs> Is Dorothy Lamour alive? Oh, that's what counts, you know. Hello, Charlie. What's the matter? Hello, Daddy. Did they, did the play scare you? Yes, it did, Charlie. Well, don't be frightened. I'm here. <laughs> I'm scared to death. <laughs> Hold my hand, Daddy. Oh, Charlie, you're so nice. Mm. Not too close now. Why? What's the matter? Well, after that play, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Even myself. <laughs> Well, you don't have to worry about me. No, maybe not. But I'm warning you, if you mention that guy named Adam, I'm off like a flash. You mean Adam Brandt? I'm off. <laughs> hey, come back here, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. What? <laughs> don't ever do that to me. <laughs> I thought you were protecting me. Well, I am. But after the fifth corpse, every man for himself. <laughs> Oh, Morning Becomes Electra was a bit morbid, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't call it whimsical. <laughs> Cute is the word, I think. Well, you only heard a small part of the play, you know. Yeah, well, I see where it could have gone on, yes. <laughs> there were still two left to kill. <laughs> Warren well, took the quick way. It must be awful facing the electric chair. Yes. Must be worse sitting in it, though. <laughs> so why make mouse traps out of mole holes? It all happens so quick in the electric chair. It's just this, and there you are. But where are you? Well, you aren't. Uh, maybe I should have said this, and there you aren't. <laughs> Do you believe in capital punishment? Well, yes. If it's not too severe, I think it's all right. <laughs> but after all, this Orrin, he was guilty. Yes, it was wrong of him to kill his mother. Well, that was my first impression, yes. <laughs> he probably didn't even have a license to carry a gun. <laughs> you see, they didn't clear that up, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure if you write it, uh, if you wrote it, things would be a lot different. Yes, yes, I'm sure it would. Of course, if I wrote it, the first theme would show three ghosts out in a windstorm, see? And Mr. Fields could play that part, you see. Mr. Fields? Yes, you know, three sheets in the wind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, W.C. Fields. Uh, 
Give me that back again. Where are you? Well... Now, at first, I thought you were talking about me, Don. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling, Bill? Uh, wait a minute. They got me all mixed up here. Oh, they have, huh? Yeah. Well... I feel like a June bride, Don. Like a June bride. Well, how is that, Bill? I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> Now, June's a great month. I was married in June. Years later, I was divorced in June. Yeah, well, that's remarkable, Bill. Now, I went to the can for back alimony in June. Yeah, yes, Bill. Yeah, June. But, uh, I was parole in June. <laughs> Uh, June's a marvelous month with me, Dad. Yeah, I agree with you, Bill. But uh, tell me, uh, how do you like your new place up in the Bel Air Hills? It's uh, uh, very exclusive, isn't it? Oh, I don't know, Don. The garbage man seems very pleasant. <laughs> Sociable sort of chap. Puts on no airs, whatever. No mock dignity. Very democratic, Dad. Oh, a nice fellow, huh, Bill? Oh, yes, he is. Very democratic. Never seems to have his nose in the air, if you know what I mean. <laughs> There's one man who should have his nose in the air. <laughs> we had quite a lengthy conversation this morning, Don. Well, that's nice, Bill. What did you say? I said to him, lovely weather we're having, Mr. Frobisher. That's his name, Don. Ichabod Frobisher. That's quite a name, Bill. There's one of the Cucamonga Frobisher. I see. And what did uh, Mr. Frobisher <laughs> say, Bill? Uh, I, I, Icky didn't have much to say right away. He's sort of a reticent fellow, you know, weighs his words carefully. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Well, then the second time I spoke to him, he says, what do you mean, lovely weather we're having? Lovely weather I'm having. Sort of played me for a chill. <laughs> Sounds like an exclusive place you might Oh, it's a very Bill. modest little place, Don. We have only one tennis court, one polo field, one beautiful baseball diamond. Baseball diamond? Boy, uh, that must be quite a place, Bill. Oh, modest little place, Don. Only one skating rink. Motorcycle track for the tots, you know. <laughs> little ski jump. Uh, what, Bill? A ski jump? Oh, yeah, we ski, Don. Did you say whiskey, Mr. Fields? <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, Charles, my diminutive little chum. Yes, I said we ski up in the hill. Uh-huh. Whiskey here. Yeah. So do I. Whiskey, so do I. <laughs> very funny, very funny, Charles. <laughs> Keep quiet or I'll throw a herbivorous caterpillar on you. But, Bill, a, a ski jump, they, they don't have snow out there in Bel Air, do they? Now I'm prepared for all emergencies. Up to now, however, we've had on an average of 365 days in the year of sunshine, and that I'm being very conservative. <laughs> All right, Bill, but uh, tell me about your house. Oh, yeah, thank you, Don. I have two swimming pools, one fur line. <laughs> A fur line swimming pool, Bill? Yes, Don, for winter painting. It gets very chilly out there when the December sun goes over the mountain. Well, that, that's quite a novelty, a fur line swimming pool, Yes, Bill. it is. But the spring, we shave it. We take out the fur and line the pool with little chintz. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, I understand it's very hilly country in Bel Air. Is oh, that true, Bill? Yes, it is, Don. Yes, it is. So hilly up there, we can't engage a man to move lawn unless he has one leg shorter than the other. Well, how high are you there, Bill? Oh, very high, Don. Very high. As a matter of fact, I had my driveway built by a retired roller coaster designer. <laughs> I imagine at an altitude like that, one's nose would begin to resemble a frozen strawberry. <laughs> Very good. Very good, Charles. How would you like me to whittle you down to a kite stick? <laughs> Bill, don't you find it hard to get the right kind of help up there? Oh, no, Don. The servant problem is very simple. I've got a butler who's a retired steeplejack. And a Swiss maid used to do a high wire act from one of the four bounding McSlepperman. It's the feel right at home up there on the hill. Oh, I can understand that, Bill. Now, I lost my cook this morning, Don. Marvelous cook, too. An ex-parachute jumper. Oh, that, that's too bad, Bill. How did you lose him? Well, we sent him to the village for two quarts of milk or something. I think I want to watch it. And, uh, uh, and he stepped off the back porch and found his parachute. But the place has its advantages, too, Don. Advantages, Bill? Oh, yes. The bill collectors take one look at those long, winding roads, and they decide to turn back to the office and write a letter instead. 
But I have them again. The postman won't climb the hills to deliver the letters. Well, look, Bill, what do you do for amusement up there? Oh, amusement. Oh, we hunt, Don. What kind of game do you hunt? Oh, hunting we will go. Hunting we will go. Bill, I have boys again. Bill, what what kind of what kind of game do you hunt? Oh, everything, Don. Everything from the laughing hyena to the ferocious pronghorn ad bark. Indigenous to the Himalayas. The high Andes and the lair. Places full of wild game, Don. Any snakes? Snakes galore. We have a plethora of snakes, Don. To say nothing of a paucity. Being male and female. Ah, oh, it's beautiful to sit on the porch of Sunday and watch the little children across the street rolling their hooked snakes up and down the hill. Carnival. <laughs> Dr. Smun's children, Don. Dr. Smun? Uh, Dr. Gipwar B. Smun. <laughs> Fine old gentleman, Don. Surgeon who really loves his work. Makes a hobby of it. He is in his gayest mood whilst carving off the patient's leg. <laughs> Maybe you've seen him in Bonneville, Don. He used to saw a woman in half. Yeah, but look, what, what about the animals, Bill? Oh, yeah, the woods are so freighted with wild animals of every kind. My dear neighbor in the rear, Mr. Cuppy, used to be a bear on Wall Street. His son, Mr. T. Shrewsbury Cuppy Jr., is a cub reporter. A skunk ran across the lawn the other day. A skunk? Did you shoot him, Bill? Oh, uh, well, I was in my reading room, shaving. <laughs> I didn't know what come there, man. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Come near me, Don. The skunk went across. I picked up a bottle of perfume and hurled it at the skunk's head. Did you, did you hit the skunk, Bill? I thought I did, but I must have missed him by a mile. <laughs> Any other game hunting up there, Bill? Oh, yes. We hunt ground mold, ground hogs. A lot of makes fine hams, Don. You ever taste groundhog ham? But, Bill, hunting groundhogs, the groundhog only comes out once a year. I found that out. I got rheumatism lying around in ambush for 11 months. <laughs> Why didn't you take a pot shot of one of the little nippers? But eagle hunting, Don, there's real sport. I shot a rare eagle the other day. Yeah, well, what's a rare eagle, uh, Mr. Fields? <laughs> two under par, my diminutive little child. Oh. How, how do you shoot eagles, Mr. Fields? I Field? shoot them on horseback, child. Pardon me for oh. cutting you off. There. Do eagles ride horseback, Mr. Fields? Yes, no. eagles, elks, and odd fellows. I live in a... <laughs> Bill, do you, do you do any horseback riding out there? I was practically born on a horse, Don. My mother was an equestrian with a circus. And I've had the same horse for 20 years, old Giddyup. Giddyup? Yes, Greek oh. name. Yes, you wouldn't understand it, Charles, an expression we equestrians use when we wish the horse to start. Well, after oh. 20 years, there must be a great deal between you and the horse, Bill. Usually about a foot and a half, Don. <laughs> Sometimes more. Mr. Fields, when horse you were riding, horse, do you ever catch a brass ring? <laughs> What's that? I said, you ever catch a brass ring when you go riding? Oh, sensational, Charles. Yeah. Very good. He's a cute little fellow, isn't he, Don? I think so. I still think oh, so. You admit to it, eh? Charles, I've seen better heads on umbrellas than you. <laughs> that boy could wear a pencil sharpener for a hat. Now, wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Bill. Uh, Dorothy Lamour has a word to say to you. Oh, Dorothy. Hello, Bill. I just wanted to tell you what a grand time I had at your place the other day. Oh. Those dogs of yours are really wonderful. Oh, yeah, they're getting much better, dear, since I've been wearing the house slippers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that bloodhound of yours. Oh, yes, he isn't a bloodhound anymore, dear. Since you saw him last, he's developed pernicious anemia. <laughs> I like the brown dog, too. He seemed to be a, be a very good watchdog. Oh, he's a wonderful dog, dear. Yes, sir, he goes outside and if sees that anybody's there. He returns and scratches the door. What is Very he? Big, huh? What is he, a police dog? No more. Just a little stool pigeon. <laughs> well, I like my dogs, eh? All except your dash hunt. Oh, dash hunt. Very nice little dog. Three dogs long and a half a dog high. <laughs> Why do you like him, Dorothy? He bit me. Why, he bit you? My man Lush probably forgot to feed him. <laughs> so I bit you, eh? Yes. I was standing with my back to your gate, uh -huh. admiring the beautiful hills, when I stooped over to pick up my handkerchief. Oh, why don't you call me, dear? I would have picked it up for you. Remember, Dorothy, the days of chivalry are not over. 
Well, when I was stooping over with my back turned, your little dash one came running out and sank his teeth into my limb just below the calf. Why, you're stooping over picking up a handkerchief, dear? Yes, Bill. A car. But you were rather fortunate, dear. It wasn't my Newfoundland dog that bit you. <laughs> Nelson, you know the old proverb, one good turn deserves an encore. Oh, Don, of all people to be quoting proverbs, I know some, too. Oh, hello, Alice. You know some of what? Proverbs, you know, like, well, people who live in glass houses. Yeah. Well, they don't have much privacy, do they? <laughs> Isn't it fun? I know, I know another one, too. Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, Alice, you see, Nelson Eddy is ready to sing another song. Oh, oh, of course, Mr. Eddy. Uh, may I compliment you on your marvelous voice? You may. Thank you, Miss Brady. Oh, not at all. Uh, why don't you just call me Alice? Much more chummy, I think. Don't you like to be chummy? <laughs> of course I do, Alice. And uh, you can call me Nelson. Yeah, you can call me when this thing's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, hello, Charlie. I want you to meet Alice Brady. Miss Brady, this is Charlie McCarthy. I don't want to meet her. She's a killer. <laughs> How do you do? I've been looking for you. Yeah. Why <laughs> pick on me? Take Bergen. No. <laughs> I'd be money to meet you. Uh, in a dark alley, huh? <laughs> Stick around, fellas. This spot I'm standing on may be marked by an X. Yes. <laughs> Charlie, do you find me hard to approach? It's not the approach I'm worrying about. It's the getaway. <laughs> Mark McCarthy, always joking, I hope. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yes. Charlie's a great kidder. Well, I'll be getting into my song. Oh, your song? Oh, yes, of course, I have such a bad memory. You know, Nelson, I think your voice is just too, too, too. Uh, yes? Well, you see, that's just too, too, too. You, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, we know what you mean. Do you know what you mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> McCarthy, isn't he cute? Or is he? <laughs> now, Nelson, I'm just dying to know what your next number will be. Aren't we all? I know how tense a singer is before he's ready to sing. You know, I sing... Uh-oh. I knew no good would come of this, no. <laughs> really, Nelson. My instructor was grand. He had so much patience. You know, it must be very trying on an instructor when a pupil is just beginning. Yes, those primary steps are quite boring. I suppose he began by teaching you to breathe. Be silly, Nelson. I always knew how to breathe. <laughs> Do you know that divine man spent an entire afternoon with me while I ran up and down one scale? I just never seemed to could get it right. <laughs> Were you a little flat? Oh, that didn't make any difference. I always played in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are you what one might call uh, a finished singer? Oh, well, that's what people say, but you can't discourage me. In fact, just the other day, I gave a recital, and I invited a lot of people to prove how well I sang. And they heard you sing? No. I made the terrible mistake of serving refreshments first. <laughs> oh, that is too bad. Well, but it doesn't discourage me, Nelson. And I've just been thinking, wouldn't it be nice for us to sing a duet sometime? Maybe now. Uh, uh, yes, it, it would be nice uh, sometime. Uh, well, maybe now. Well, uh, uh, tell me, Alice. Uh, uh, well, uh, can you say this? Richard, it's a Laura, 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 Lee. Oh, there you go again. I always want to play games. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a boy at all. <laughs> That's not a game, Alice. Those are the words in my next song. And if you really want to make it a duet, you'll have to say, with titty to Laura, Laura, Latity, titty to Laura, Laura Lee. With titty to Johnny, Well, I think you just better make it a solo, and I'll listen. Thanks for listening to 1937 Part 15, the Soundscapes Audio Montage Series Number 24 from When Radio Ruled. I'm Mike Gillette, your host. When Radio Ruled and the Soundscape series are before TV productions. Copyright 2022.
should have told you what your lips are for, what your arms are for, whom I adore, baby. Now it's hard to hold you. Never should have told you what your looks would mean on a movie screen. You would steal the scene, baby. Never should have told you. Since I put you wise, all you do is roll your eyes at everyone in the crowd. My, but you're acting proud. Now that you know I care, you've got your nose up in the air. Never should have told you that you're heavenly, like a dream to me. Now you're mean to me, baby. Never should have told you. Thank you.